Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today's video topic is all about organizing your video clips inside of iMovie. Let's rock and roll. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're gonna open up iMovie and take a look at the organization structure and some of the ways to organize your video clips for your projects that you use in iMovie. So we'll start by opening up iMovie here. And whenever you open up iMovie, it always brings you to where you last left it. It opens up to a project I was in. So I'm gonna click on projects in the top left. I'm gonna go to media in the top center and now I'm at the main location of where I organize my clips. And I'm just gonna start off by saying, when I say organize, I mean that very, very uh, loosely. To be successful with iMovie, you have to forget about everything you've ever learned about folders and putting items in folders and organizing files that way because that is a non-existent theory in this piece of software iMovie doesn't have folders, they don't have keywords. We're trained in our mind usually to put items inside a folder. I just wanna create a folder, whether it's a, a name of an event, uh, a time period, a date, whatever it may be, and just put videos in there. But it doesn't necessarily work that way. So first we have to understand how iMovie thinks. How does iMovie want us to organize our video clips? And we have to understand two things, events and libraries. So when you take videos, and you import them into iMovie, they go inside an event. That event is inside a library. And you can have multiple events and you can have multiple libraries. Most people will have one library by default and that houses all of the events that they have. And they could have an event that says 2021 and then put all of the video footage from 2021, the year, inside of that event. Or you could create multiple events in that library and call the library 2021 and have an event for a birthday, have a, another event for vacation, have another event for pets, whatever it may be. So let's go ahead and look at some examples and walk through the process of the events, organizing, and so on and so forth. So when I'm in iMovie here, on the left-hand side, I have my library list. And at the top, I hear photos, I have all events, and I have actually three different libraries that I've created. So you may only see one library here, but I have a library called Arizona, I have a library called Vacations iMovie Library, and a, a library called iMovie Library. And you can rename these anything that you want. If I click once on there to select it and then click again, I call this Arizona Library, so it can be called whatever you want it to be. Now by default, these libraries are organized inside of your finder. So if we go to the finder and go to our movies folder, this is where you'll see those libraries here. And these libraries, uh, they have the little icon of almost like a colorful film strip here. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see that the kind of file that they are is the iMovie library. So that's how we know that these are libraries. They're a giant container that hold all of your videos. And inside of each library are different events. So if we go back to iMovie here, notice my vacation iMovie library. So this is where I have a California event, I have a North Shore event, and I have a pool fun event. Each event is almost like a moment in time. So California, this is all the video footage from California last summer and it's organized into this one event. Here's another event called North Shore, and this is where all of the video footage is stored for our hiking trip up the North Shore in, in Minnesota. And then this is just another event called Pool Fun with a bunch of video clips from, I don't know what summer this was, but we were, we were swimming at my brother's house. So, and if we wanna create another event, we select the library here, we can go up to File and choose New Event. And let's say by default it puts the date there, but maybe I wanna put uh, birthday and then press return. So now I've created an event to put all of the birthday videos inside of here. So the event is really just a container. Think of the event almost like a folder that holds all of your video footage for that moment in time. Now above this, we have all events and all events just shows you all of the events collectively amongst all of the libraries that you currently have open. And then above that, we also have photos and this ties into the Apple Photos, so if you have organized albums and, and content in there, 
iMovie and, and Photos actually talk to each other behind the scenes. So any organization that you do within Photos, you'll actually see that and have access to it in iMovie. Now I will say that depending on how large your Photos library is, uh, you can even see mine here, it's spinning and spinning. So I don't 100% rely on this method because I do have a ton of photos inside of Apple Photos and it does take forever. Anytime you're doing anything video related, patience. You for sure need patience because depending on the age of your computer, the speed of your computer, uh, you might get that spinning beach ball a lot. And believe me, it, it'll drive you crazy. So there's the photos. We can click up here in the top left and choose to either look at my albums, all of the albums shared, or all photos. And so when I click on this, it's going to load and give me a preview of all of those pictures. So here I really don't organize any of the photographs within iMovie. It's just giving me a reference of the of what's currently in my pictures that I, that I see. So uh, it's nice that they're there, but you can't really organize or move any of these photos around while in iMovie. So just keep in mind of that. Now one thing before we go on, if I click on all events here, one nice little trick is you have kind of this representation called a key photo that defines your whole event of video clips. So notice when I move my cursor from left to right, it's actually giving me, it's skimming through every single video clip that's in that event. And it shows me the date in the bottom left and it shows me how many items are in that event. So here I have 52 clips or 52 files in the North Shore. And it was this was actually taken back in 2018. Um, I have another green screen event here, computer B-roll. Uh, California uh, and here's my birthday event with nothing in there but as I move my cursor to the left and right let's say that instead of this seagull on the beach I don't want that to define the California I can right click on this picture that I want and say make cover frame and now that kind of key photo is the one that represents that whole event as a whole so it's just more visual I kind of I like I like little things like that so maybe we want the parrot to be the cover face of that event and so now that is the one that represents that so same thing with anything else we can go to the pool one here or even North Shore maybe we want the uh, the hiking trail here make cover frame and so now that one is is the key photo is the one that makes the thumbnail for that event so side little note there it's kind of nice now we have three different libraries and when I click on the library here, I'm able to see all of the video footage within this one library. So let's actually simplify things. Let's just stick with one library here. So I'm going to click on Arizona library and we're just going to close it. So if I right click on here, I can say close this library so I don't have to look at it. I'm going to do the same thing with iMovie library, but instead I'm going to go up to file and choose close library. So now I just have one library open and majority of people, unless you've created more libraries, you, you probably only have one library open. Some of the preferences that you have, because when I have this library selected, I'm just scrolling through a whole ton of stuff. And so if I click on view on the top, I can say sort events either by name and I can choose uh, newest to oldest or oldest to newest. And I can also choose how to sort the clips within the events by either date, name, uh, duration. And then I can also separate the days within events. So here, notice how this is checked. If I scroll up to the top here, it actually gives me the date of these clips. So let's collapse this. So everything is really by date. The organization that iMovie wants you to do is by date of the clips. And because we live in a digital era, everything is kind of time stamped with these videos. But notice if you don't have th these dates here, it's because of your view preference. And we would uncheck this show separate days and events and it all goes away. So it shows all of the video clips, just all one giant bucket for me here. Now, if I have these video clips inside of a project or an event, this is where it shows me here. So here I have the North Shore. So there's 52 clips in there, California and Pool Fun. But notice birthday isn't in this list. It's because I don't have any clips. But also notice the Feld Share uh, kids on the loose trailer is here and that's because this is a project that's inside of this library and if I go to projects in the top center here I can see that this is the video project and I created it using some of the media within these libraries so it shows up there as well now I'm gonna go back to view and I'm gonna choose to have uh, show separate days and events and I'll untoggle these 
so we can see everything. And then it's a lot to go through and this is why they have different events. So if I click on California 2020, now I only see these clips here. I don't see any of the other ones. And the same thing, I can go up to view, sort clips by name if I want. I can sort them by duration and that way it's gonna put the really, really short uh, clips at the top or at the bottom, depending if you have it set to ascending or descending. So no right or wrong way here. Now, the real estate of working in this small little window is, is a little frustrating. I wish that we could make and manipulate the screens of iMovie to see more content. The only ability that we really have is we can close this left-hand sidebar here in the top left here. So this little button right next to the name of the event, if I click this, it's gonna hide the library list. And if I click it again, it, it opens it back up. But when I do this, I, I'm able to get a little bit more of the video clips to see. But also notice in the top right, I have this little gear. This little gear allows me to manipulate how I see these clips. So the clip size, if I drag it all the way to the right, it makes them much larger. If I drag them all the way to the left, it makes it so I can see more. And anytime that you're moving your, your cursor on top of these clips, it's gonna allow you to skim through these video clips and I can hear the audio. And if I press the space bar, it's going to play that clip for me and just keep on going until the next clip. Now, if I go back to that little gear here, I have this ability to zoom and then also show the audio waveforms. Now, if I uncheck this last box here at the bottom, notice on the clips, it just takes that visual representation of the audio away. I can still hear the clips, but they just don't show that uh, little bar underneath. So I actually like to see that, so I'm gonna click that back. And then the zoom, to understand the zoom, it's really about the duration of the video clip. So for example, let's go ahead and zoom this so we see, uh, we'll do it so we see three clips all together. When I move my cursor on top of one of these clips, notice in the top left, it tells me a number. So here, this clip is 2.8 seconds. If I go to the next one, it's 3.7 seconds. And the next one, 5.9 seconds. And as you go to longer clips, it'll have uh, you know 1.6 minutes here. Here is 32 seconds, 30 seconds. So you're able to see the duration of how long this is. But this clip is only represented by this kind of one frame, this one box. If we scroll back up to the top, and if I go to this gear, if I drag the slider, Notice it changes from all to 30 minutes, to 10 minutes, to five minutes, to two minutes, to one minute, to 30 seconds, to 10 seconds, to five seconds, to two seconds, to one second, and a half a second. So this slider is almost, imagine an accordion. You're just stretching out this video clip so that you can be more precise with, the, with being able to see that content. So for example, this first clip here is 5.5 seconds. So when I go to the gear here, this five seconds really doesn't do much because it's right over that threshold. But if I go to two seconds, notice now I see two boxes here. It kind of has this line right in the middle. So it's saying that this first box is roughly two seconds. The second box is roughly two seconds. And so it's a little bit easier to skim through it in slow motion so that you're able to precisely choose some of the video that you want to use. If I drag this uh, to the right again, it's gonna go to one second. So now it's broken up into one box, two boxes, three boxes, four, and it continues over to the next one, and then five. So it's just stretching it out so that you can see more. And the helpful part of that is, let's actually change this so that the duration is set so we're descending so that we have this long clip. So this first clip is 1.6 minutes. I'm able to see a little bit more precisely where I want to see part of this video. Now a side note here, as you're moving your cursor, sometimes this audio gets really annoying. So you can go up to view on the top and turn off audio skimming. And then when you move your cursor and scrub through it, it's not gonna sound like a screeching, uh, you know, record the whole entire time. Your ears will thank you, trust me. So you kind of get the idea of the whole purpose of this slider. It's, it's just dragging the zoom out so that you're more precise with your videos that you're able to see. 
and you can go back and make it smaller so that they all are represented by one kind of frame. Now, this is where the frustrating piece comes in. Most people want to create a file structure, a folder, and be able to drag these clips into different folders so that you're able to organize them. But it doesn't really work that way. The event is technically the folder. It's just the container that holds all the video clips. And iMovie really wants to keep it simple. It cares about really, you have three options in my opinion. Number one, is the video clip good and usable? Number two, eh, you're not really sure. You might want to use the clip, you might not. And number three, the clip is terrible, it's so shaky, it's blurry, eh, it's time to delete it. And that's kind of the organization that you really want to think about before you even create a project. So for example, we'll stick with the uh, California theme here. Let's close the list there so we can see more clips. You'll notice that in the top here, next to the search, we have this option to either hide rejected, favorites, and rejected. So what this means is iMovie wants you to go through this video footage and mark the best of the best and get rid of the worst. So the way to do that is if we click on a clip, notice how it selects the entire clip. We have these handlebars on the side and we're able to drag them left and right so that we can choose some of the video clip that we really want to use. Now, this is where it's really helpful to zoom this out because this whole clip itself is 1.1 minutes. And as I'm skimming and scrolling through here, it's going so fast that I really can't pick out the good pieces of it. So this is where I'd want to zoom in so I can see these clips. So if we go down here, we now have this clip. I'm just skimming through this. And I'm going to go down. All right, so this probably is not necessarily the best clip here. So there's really nothing. If I press the space bar, turn down the audio. So really here, this would not be a clip that I would use. I don't really see anything on here. Way too shaky. I'm not sure what I was doing when I videotaped this, but that's beside the point. Skimming through here. So I don't like this clip at all, so I'm going to click once on it to select it, and I'm going to press delete on the keyboard. Now when I press delete on the keyboard, what it does is actually just mark the clip as rejected. It's not actually deleting it. It's putting that red bar at the top to give me a visual that I do not like this clip. And so if I click on all clips here, if I clicked on rejected, it's now only gonna show me this one clip or any other clips that have been rejected. Let's zoom out a little bit. So notice these other clips I also have rejected. So if I go back to all clips, I'm now gonna see all of these video clips. Let's go through here again, and I'm gonna select, click on a clip, drag the left and the right to find the piece that I want. I like this of the big turtle. Here we go. So that's probably a nice clip of that. So the next thing I would do is press F on the keyboard and that marks it as a favorite. You can also go up to mark the top and choose favorite here, but keyboard shortcuts, they're a lifesaver. Learn them, it'll speed up your workflow so much better. Now I've marked this as a favorite. So really, whenever you're going through your video footage, you're really picking out the best of the best and you're getting rid of everything else. And by doing this whole process before you even start your project is really gonna be helpful because you have a great idea of what video content you're able to use. But then as you're skimming through it, you're gonna get a better, better sense of how your project is gonna turn out and the vision that you have for your video project. So it's worth the time and investment to go through each clip and mark, mark your favorites and get rid of the, the bad stuff because it'll speed up the project way faster when you know what content you actually have. Now, a couple tricks. Usually our mind wants us to click and hold and start to drag. And this is where it doesn't work that way because if I wanted to select in the middle of this fish clip and just in here, instead of grabbing these little handlebars from left and then go to right again and then pressing F on the keyboard, I just wanna click and drag and select that clip. There's a nice little keyboard shortcut, hold the letter R on the keyboard and when you do that, you can now click and drag anywhere on that clip and it's gonna select it. So now I can press F on the keyboard, boom, I'm done. Same thing here, all right, I like this giant turtle goes by, so I'm gonna hold down R on the keyboard 
and drag it while I'm clicking and holding, let go, and now it's only selected that particular range, range for R, and I can press F on the keyboard. So it's really nice to have that keyboard shortcut because clicking on the clip and constantly going from left to right is honestly just, it's terrible. Apple, fix that. Let you just, let us just click and drag, seriously. But anyways, the next thing that you would do, let's, let's say that you've marked a clip. So let's mark a few more clips here that are our favorites. And just for fun, I'm not gonna actually make them favorites, but we'll just go through. So a fun fish. Oh, and this eel was pretty cool too. Look at him go. Okay, so if we think about this, we've gone through all of the, the video footage and now we would go up to all clips and choose only to view favorites. Because now when I start my project, I now have every single clip that I've already gone through and I can easily start creating this project because I've already thrown away and gotten rid of the, the stuff I don't that's not usable and I'm left with the best of the best. If I go back up to favorites now, I can choose all clips and I can see everything. Now, one thing is, oops, I accidentally marked it as a favorite or I accidentally rejected it and I don't want it to be rejected. Well, easy enough. If you select any part of a clip that is already rejected or marked as a favorite, you can press the letter U on the keyboard and it's gonna unmark that clip or unmark that selection. Also, if I go up to mark and say unrate, it will do it as well, the part that is selected. That's how you can undo that. So it really, the, the filtering of your clips are, it's either favorited, unrated, or it's rejected. And you could do all of that by selecting it. And with these marking tools up here for favorite, rejected, un, and unrate, you're just defining what's good and what's bad. So with that, if I went back to the library list, if I went to another event here, notice the pool video footage, here's all of the clips, and if I scroll through, notice some of them have the red at the top where I've rejected them, some of them have the green already, and I'm able to already go through and see those clips. So that is pretty much the organization. You, you have to really forget about everything you've learned about organization with folders and files, and really stick with your videos going to events, and your event is just a container, and that event is stored in libraries. And you can have multiple events, like I have here for you know California, North Shore, Pool Fun, and then within each event, you're just organizing your clips by how you're marking them and rating them, either as favorites, unmarked, whatever it may be. You can search for clips too. I haven't named any of these clips here. If I select a clip here and click on the I, notice the image 7357. So if I did 73, 7357, it's gonna show me that clip. Now, I don't necessarily name any of the video clips unless maybe I had a video clip from, actually, let's do this. Let's say that I, I wanna do a search for a clip. So I have these green screen random video clips. Let's just drag. All right, this Jurassic Park one. Let's just drag this into California. I'm gonna drag it just like this. And if we scroll down, let's pretend I don't know where it's at. So if I do dinosaur, I'll be able to search it because dinosaur lives in the text, in the information of this video clip. So you can search for your clips if you know the names of them. If you don't know the names, don't worry about it too much uh, unless you want to change the name. So to recap, you really have your video clips, you select them, press F to mark as a favorite, U on the keyboard to unrate it, delete on the keyboard to mark it as rejected. And if you wanna actually just delete this clip from the library itself, itself, you can hold down Command and press Delete. And that gives you the option to actually delete this video file from your iMovie project or from your iMovie event. And then notice here it says, do you want to delete from the iMovie library? Yes, I want to delete that. So now that, that dinosaur one is completely gone. It's moved to the trash. If I come down here, here is that video clip. And then I could empty it and get rid of it completely off of my computer. So that's pretty much organization in iMovie. You, uh, if, you, if you want more control, that's where a lot of people will end up going to Final Cut. That's kind of the big brother of iMovie. A lot more control, a lot more options for organizing. The language is very, very similar with the library concept and the events, but in Final Cut, they add keywords which allow you to 
mark certain video clips and associate it with a keyword where you can search it and put it in kind of its own separate container and really kind of subcategorize the videos within events, which is really, really helpful. But you just have to know that organizing your video clips inside of iMovie is not like your traditional organization of files on your computer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that little like button for the video. If you wanna see more, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.